Hey, welcome back to Contractor Evolution. Now, you could say that there are two groups of businesses out there, the ones that put actual thought into where they're headed and the ones that do not. Now, it's no secret that all high-performing organizations in the world put some real brain space into mapping out the future in order to be able to channel their resources and their human energy towards achieving intentional goals. Now, our company, Breakthrough Academy, which is the one that brings you the Contractor Evolution Show, we've been ranked among the country's fastest growing companies for years in a row now, and one of our big keys to success has been our rhythmical annual strategic planning process that happens every December. Um, One of my favorite quotes about entrepreneurship comes from Stephen Covey, and it goes something like this. He says, all things are created twice, once in the mind and then into real life. Now, what this means is that everything that you want to make a reality, whether it's the lifestyle you're after or the income you want to make, uh, the size of your business or specific leaders you want to have in your company, perhaps an amazing dialed in CRM, all these things are first going to come to life in your mind and then be created into reality. So a really great mechanism to allow this creative process to unfold is this annual strategic planning ritual. For years, it's been our arena to reflect, to dream, to vision, and to create a path for a brilliant future. Um, It's something that we look forward to every year and really enjoy as leaders. In today's episode, the three directors at Breakthrough Academy come together to give you a peek behind the curtain and tell you about how we go about our annual strategic planning process. So I'm joined on the show today by James Dale, our Director of Training and Development, and Danny Kerr, BTA's Director of Assessment, as we give you a play-by-play of how we plan out the future and bring it to reality with extraordinary accuracy. So on the show today, we dive into a couple cool things. Uh, One, why this ritual has been so foundational foundational to our success and why no great company out there operates without it. And then we get into these step-by-step process of how we prepare for our sessions and exactly what goes on throughout our three-day annual strategic planning retreats. We also talk about what we do to explain our annual plans to our team and why I think it's the responsibility of every entrepreneur out there to communicate with their teams this way every January. So let's dive in to strategic planning with Danny and James. You're listening to Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. If you're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability, you've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school, and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Hey, just before we jump into things, I wanted to let you know you can get the free resources that we talk about in this episode in the show description. So hit pause right now, go download them, and they'll be waiting in your inbox by the time we finish this episode. James, Danny, welcome to the studio, my friends. Yeah, man. Thanks Thank for having you, us. man. Uh, I've been very excited to to do this together with you. Uh, I've been excited for this for a while, actually. This is the first time that the three of us, and just the three of us, are in studio together. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited to also get into this topic, which is one that the three of us know so well. We've done countless strategic planning sessions together. Um, and this this topic specifically of annual strategic planning is one that the three of us know uh, quite well. Now, um, we also know all too well that it is a very time-intensive, thought-intensive process. Um, and it also seems to occur at a time that's pretty challenging in a shorter month, like we do it every December, because so many people, um, our staff and otherwise, think of an annual cycle in the form of a calendar year. So uh, it's a very time-intensive process. It's a thought-intensive process. And it's not always easy to make happen, especially in this kind of short December time frame. So I just want to start with this, like why, in your opinion, is this so important uh, to do and, and why do we do it so thoroughly? Right. Yeah. And I, what I think is, you know, we've got a pretty big vision that we're trying mm-hmm. to create here at BTA and it's not just one year long, right? Like totally. I look at this, this is probably like another 10 years of mm-hmm. like thought that has to lead in one direction mm-hmm. to achieve a common goal and to look at the next 365 days and not give them the amount of thought that we give them. I don't know how we'd ever get there. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's so easy to veer off into random distractions of which I have every day. Mm-hmm. Right. And to sit down for three days and actually focus on where we're going for the next 365 
is very minimal, I think, if anything, right? Like, where we're actually going. So there's a lot of energy and a lot of time that's going to go into that. And um, I just think it's vital. If you want to build something long term, it's crucial. Yeah, it's a really good point, right? Anything really great takes a long time to build. Like, there's not really any companies that that were built that impacted the world in a really powerful way that were built in like one to two years, right? It's a really long journey, and you do need to control it with with interim steps, like annually, quarterly. Yeah, it doesn't happen by accident. And I, and I think in the first couple of years for us, like it was pretty like shoot from the hip. What do we feel is going mm-hmm. on? Let's mm-hmm. make some moves on that. Mm-hmm. But as the business has been getting bigger, it's, you know, we're pr- getting pretty clear on what exactly we need to do and not do. And the details of how we do that. Yeah. That's where the, the, the devil lies in those details. Yeah. And I think it's easy to get distracted and put in the wrong initiative, work with the wrong vendor, bring mm-hmm. on the wrong person on the team. And that can derail us pretty quickly. So I just, I know what's at stake. I also know how complicated it is, you know, the mission that we're on right now. And we need time to think through that. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I, I do think about that a lot, right? We, uh, as an entrepreneur, you you direct a lot of resources over the course of a year. Like it's really significant when you look at the number of people that it is, and the amount of time, the amount of money that you have in your in your control over where it gets pointed. It's huge, and 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 to figure out like uh, James, your analogy of exactly where you're going to strike that golf ball to get it into the right place um, is, is is pretty important. And and one of the things that I feel, I just I feel a lot better when I have confidence in a strategy just from you know everyone feels better when they're more confident about whatever it is that you do whether you're you're playing basketball or golfing or in business when you've got a well thought out strategy that you can lean on it's like a solid wall you're like I know that this is done well um yeah I just I find it really increases my 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 happiness and my confidence in a year and I think just kind of to, to kind of add to this, of like, you know, why it's important. I would imagine like, like most businesses that are listening to this and to us, there's so many things that we could do. And mm. the, the, the real rigor and discipline of this whole process is like, what should we work on and what should we put our energy to? Because there's so many things yeah. you could do and what do you spend your time on? And that's really what this process is about. It's interesting. I always find Danny's really tight on ideas. Kind of really good <laughs> There's no, many things to do. Wait and I know all of them. I'm completely kidding. <laughs> uh, I'm completely kidding. And, and I'll, I'll say another thing that really comes to mind for me is also like when you think about the people that you're leading, um, being able to have real clarity for them is also such a huge part of leadership. Uh, people, especially smart people on your team, are looking to you for clarity and vision all the time, right? And if you've not taken the time to think through it and know where you're going, um, I think that's really detrimental on you as a leader. Um, and, and, and on one extreme side of it, to your point, James, also, if you're very, um, kind of confused and it, it feels complex, like you feel complex as a leader mentally where you're all over the place and there's too many ideas and you're almost, the leadership is erratic. That I think is also generally not a good thing. Man, hundred percent. Like if you're not clear on what you're doing, how could you expect the yeah. team to be clear 100%. on what's going on, right? And, and, and you also see it's quite often, it's sometimes hard for uh, entrepreneurs to see it themselves from the inside. But when you get an outside look, it's quite common that people will operate the way that the leader will operate. So if you have a very erratic nature in, your, in, in, in the way that you go about your leadership, typically that'll also be uh, seen in your people. They will exude that as well, which, right. is, which is not a good thing. Um, so on, on the flip side of it, just on this kind of like our purpose behind it, what, in your guys' opinion, like what's the problem with not doing it? Someone saying, man, it's like, it's a lot of time. You guys spend days every December on a short December doing this. Um, is there a way around this or is it really worth putting in that amount of time? Like in your opinion, what's the risk of not doing it? Or what's the, what are some of the consequences if, if, if you just don't go about this process? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I organically like to just make decisions on the fly and I get excited by ideas. And unfortunately I'm pretty convincing as if I know that <laughs> yeah. I thought through yeah, this a lot. <laughs> and a lot of people are like, wow, you really, you really seem to know where we're going. Let's all go in that direction <laughs> until we get 60 days down that direction with 30 people on our team and realize, Danny, you really don't know where you're going, do you? Totally. Yeah. And it's, and it's problematic, right? So you, you can hit some pretty real dead <laughs> ends that disrupt your mojo that disrupt the flow and the direction of where everybody's going. And, and those can be massive things, right? Like those can be, you know, new CRM system that you put in place that you realize this is not actually the system we need. 
or 100%. a new marketing manager that you put in place and you realize this is actually not the right person. This isn't yeah. the skill set we need. This isn't the type of marketing we should be doing. Totally. So, I mean, right. you have all of these resources, whether it be, you know, people, money kind of at your disposal and you have to be extremely intentional with yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's, and it's, I have a tendency, I know I do to get really rallying behind something that I believe in, but if I haven't taken the time or thought behind it, mm-hmm. It's easy even for me to sell myself into why this is great. <laughs> You're that good at selling, hey? <laughs> yeah. You're completely I'm convinced totally yourself. convinced. And, 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 and it's, it's taking a step back. And really, I've learned this a lot from you, Igor. It's taking that step back to really critically look at it objectively. Yeah. And, po- and play devil's advocate. Even if you're so convinced this is great, really look at it. Yeah. Because what's at stake after that decision is made gets larger and larger every single year you run your company. Because there's more totally, and more yeah. momentum. Yeah, it's it. different when it's like you and one or two other employees uh, as when it is with you with 50 staff that you're directing. Well, if you, if you do the math on this, I, I, I think of it this way. If someone brought this up to me one time, if you say the average person works like 2,000 hours in a year on your team, you know, Right, like they're working 40 hours, 40 a, week, hours a week, 50 weeks a 50 year, weeks yeah, a year. 2,000 hours. And say you've got 10 people on your team, that's 20,000 hours wow, that, that, you're at, directing. that you're directing. So is it the risk of not spending you know, 5, 10, 15 hours of how are you going to use those 20,000 hours is huge. That's such a good analogy. Yeah, like if, if you're not willing to put in the 20 hours of really focused thought to direct 20,000 hours in the right direction, you're at risk of getting a lot of things wrong. Right. It's a great way to look at it. I love it. Yeah. It, it, you know, I, I feel very similarly about it. I think that um, th- there's a huge risk of, of working on a business plan. I think that isn't viable from the start. To your point, Danny, we're like, well, did we hire, you know, we just went out and hired a marketing manager, but we didn't think through the skill sets or like, is marketing even important? Or is it not, right? There, there's so many big questions that need to be thought through and you kind of engage on what I like to think of as like a journey or you're like headed on a hike, but are you going in the right direction? Like, should we be walking this way or this way, right? Um, th- there's, you have to be like really check the viability of that of that business plan. And sometimes it's, I'm talking like very practically speaking, if you're saying well, like, how many estimates do we need to do in a year? And we just say, well, if I just do how many, you know, I don't know, five to six estimates a year and it should be pretty good, right? You could be totally wrong where your entire business isn't viable with the number of people you have and you don't even know it. So it's like you're headed towards the cliff. You don't even know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this too, on the opposite side of the spectrum, I do see this businesses get to a point where they kind of level off. And it's just whether the owner's stuck in the day-to-day or not. Like, there's enough money coming mm-hmm. in. There's enough day-to-day stuff going on where it's comfortable. And you become complacent. And mm-hmm. that can go on. If, if you don't have an end date to your to your year, where that's like one year bleeds into another year, which bleeds into another project, which bleeds into another mm. month, and there's no goal at the end of it, and there's no target to go for, it's pretty easy for you, and especially your team, just to become complacent. Let's just yeah, clock in, clock point. out. And just do another day. Like where it's one continuous thing that goes on forever. The the strategic plan on an annual basis is kind of like that that checkpoint and rhythm that your business needs to kind of reset. Mm -hmm. And like, what are we doing? Yeah, people need goals and targets and and celebration for hitting something and recognition for when it goes well and not well. Yeah. And then something new to strive for next. And that's what makes life exciting. Mm -hmm. And when you get busy enough and do something long enough in the same rhythm, it it is kind of easy to just sit back and, coast even if coasting is 60 hours a week that's your new normal and you never really think outside of it totally yeah so it, something just came to mind for me that i never even thought about before but i come from a culture and a country as a kid where like uh, new year's funny enough was was taken quite seriously right it was it was an it's an orthodox uh, culture where like the christmas isn't on the 24th rather it's in january so there's not like when you say the holidays it's the whole country doesn't celebrate like the the 25th but the the the, the december 31st is always a huge celebration and there is this very like annual cycle to a year mm-hmm. and uh and it's funny because that's kind of ingrained in me to big new year's celebrations and trips and stuff but that you're right, Danny. That, that's an interesting piece. I haven't thought about if you blend, if every year it just blends into each other, um, there's there's a lot of downside to that where you're just heads down, you're pounding away on the same thing year after year. It's not, totally. I think that there's, it is healthy to look at an end and a start. Yeah. Very powerful. And it's the same on a quarter, on monthly goals, in your personal kind of endeavors and goals and what you want to achieve. 
That's good. I want to add, add just one final piece before we move on from this subject. Um, the financial side of things is really, really important. We'll talk about the core components of an annual strategic planning session, but this building a financial plan for the year is huge. Um, we've even had this where you build a first cut kind of financial plan and you realize this is not a viable fiscally responsible model or even worse, you don't even build one and and maybe you hit revenue, but you're heading for like a, pro, a, a financial disaster of a year where you didn't take the five hours to even figure that out and really well thought through budget for the year, right? Yeah. So that's also um, a really, really, a really huge piece. Um, one final point, implementing changes, Danny, you talk about like, are we going to hire this person? Are we going to take on this big initiative? All these things, whatever you want to call them, like big changes, updates, uh, new projects, new systems, new people, whatever it is, uh, if we're all honest with ourselves, they take a lot of time, right? A lot of time. Um, it's kind of the analogy would be like you're steering a big cruise ship. It's not like a, like a speedboat. Stuff takes time. And you need to, if you're going to make these moves to ensure like the long-term success of your business, they need to be thought out in advance, right? So this is really the time to think through that stuff. Like, uh, what key managers do we need to hire so that I don't go crazy long term as a founder? Uh, what big things do we need to invest in? What kind of brand or marketing changes do we need to make to keep up with trends in, in, in consumer buying behavior? Right. Like it's there's all these questions that if you don't think about them, they will you'll never take action on them because it takes so long to do it well. Totally. totally, yeah. Or, or if you and if you don't do that, you might just make rash, quick decisions in, the, in throughout the year without yeah. any kind of game plan. Totally, yeah. And 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 you're just going to end up behind the eight ball. And and if you know, to a lot of people will resonate with this. It's just like, yeah, we never got to that stuff. It's always we've always had that idea, and we've just kind of never made it happen. Yeah. Well, that's why. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So, anyway, I think that in a nutshell. There's so much to lose if you don't uh, take some intentional time for this every single year. Um, so coming back to the way that we do stuff, just really quickly in a nutshell, and Danny, maybe we'll start with you on this one. Like when we get together in the way that we do it during our annual strategic planning sessions, like in a nutshell, what are we looking to achieve? I think, so we always start with like, we learn a lot, right? <clears throat> we learn a lot from a year of work <laughs> and we have a big idea of where we're going. And we just really need to look at what are the major problems that it came up that needs mm -hmm. real solving. Because in the heat of battle, you can come up with quick ideas to kind of solve, th you know, small issues. But there are like bigger picture like issues that really need to be addressed and get, you need to get to the root of what's really going on. And so I think often one of the best things we do is we sit back and we really say, okay, you know, wh why are we working more than we should be right now? Right. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, why is it that, you know, we're, you know, our sales cycle is still lasting this long, no matter, you know, how many, how many people we add to the team, right? Mm -hmm. There's certain like bigger arching issues that daily you might be able to solve pieces of it, but they're just symptoms. Yeah. And so to be able to get together and properly solve those problems and really give them some thought, I think is a huge piece. I think from doing that, that helps us decide what projects we're going to take on next year. Mm -hmm. Because without doing that first, every project that we want to take on, new technology, new coaches, new programs, I ideas, it, they all seem like the most important thing. Totally. Right? It's like, while well, you're fighting me and I'm fighting you and, J and we're all yeah. like, what? I, I want my six, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and the reality is we can only pick five, right? Yep. So what five are they going to be? Well, they should be on the things that actually advance our company the most. I think that then lends itself well to deciding who we hire. Right, the people side so who, of the business. Who, who yep. needs to be on this ship to help these projects happen? To help these new initiatives? To take some weight off of our team if we're noticing some areas yep. that need help there, and that finally lends itself well to what is the budget for next year? Where are we actually going to put these dollars now that we've yeah. thought through these things? So yeah, totally. yeah. So in a nutshell, it's it's a time of like reflection and thought about the future. And when I just think about like the people that I have met in my life that are really successful in in whatever discipline that is, whether it's sport or business or anything else, a consistent pattern in them is they do take time to reflect and think. And this is, this is really the anchor, the anchor for that in our, in our December. So it's good. Awesome guys. Um, so what I want to get into now is I'd love to just get a bit of clarity for listeners on like what exactly it is that we do in a bit of a step-by-step -step process. Like, so what is 
our ritual for the annual side. So annual strategic planning. Um, and for us, like the, the crucial first step where I want to begin is our preparation process. So we do quite a bit of prep in advance of our three-day event that we're at together. Mm-hmm. Um, why, why do we do that and what does it consist of? I mean, I, I mean, so the preparation is, I think, is a huge part of it because if you come into it just blindly and just show up on the event, mm-hmm. you're already kind of behind the eight ball. So yeah. you w- you definitely want to mm-hmm. come in and having thought about some of the, what we just talked about, some of the key areas of the business. So like what did go well, what didn't go well on on a business side mm-hmm. and also, also on a personal side. I think that's really important as well. Uh, also, what are the what were the deliverables or measurable KPIs of the business, and how did you do in those KPIs? And like against you, the goals, yeah, against yeah. the goals. If you, especially if you did the strategic plan last year, like how did you do on those? So to kind of capture, like how did we do on that? So you're coming in with that information. Mm. Um, I think uh, also like what are the current issues that we have? So that, like these are the issues we see or the projects we're working on how relevant to those? Are there any other new ones that were kind of on our mind and to kind of put those in, in the mix? One of the things you said, like is, is thinking through it in like a preparatory kind of perspective is, is important. Why is that? Like, why is that important as compared to just rolling in and then thinking through that? Cause I think if you have that kind of quiet time before you come, whether it be by yourself or if you're in a, if you have a bit of a group of people doing, you're doing it with, I think it, it, you can kind of come more prepared and you've thought through some of the issues and you're not just kind of mm-hmm. blindly just showing up and like, oh, this, this, this. You've, yeah. you've done some legwork, which makes those conversations and those that time much more powerful. Yeah, you've extended your kind of thinking time frame. And one thing, and Danny, I know you want to say something, but one thing I just want to, want to say, you talk about like the personal reflection of, you know, what has gone well about my year personally, uh, what has and hasn't. One of the things that I think is also interesting to think about at this time of the year is, have I lived the life that I want to live mm-hmm. is a really, really interesting question to ask. And it, it encompasses, I mean, you're only one person. It encompasses your work. It encompasses your personal life. But that, that is a very interesting question to ask yourself as you prepare for the upcoming year and how you want to set it up. Because you, really, like, you have a finite amount of years <laughs> to live and you're about to go spend another one and, and how you want to spend and burn one of these years for lack of a better term is is a big question yeah yeah i think it's easy <clears throat> to serve the business that's actually mm-hmm. the easy part it needs attention over here okay let's go put attention over here yeah it's hard to say but to respect my ability to also be a great dad mm-hmm. and to be around you know for myself and to give myself space and to do those things with these with these factors in my personal life being right. considered and I know that two years ago is when we first started really doing that. And I know that previous to that, it really felt like we were just feeding into this machine that was like demanding more from us. Mm-hmm. And we finally got very intentional about it. We were just like, no, it's time to put our personal lives front and foremost and then go problem solve the business. And, and so, and it's, I mean, it's so critical too. like business and personal are so intertwined and you have to take stock of how am I doing personally mm-hmm. and to really think through that because if you're doing well personally, it's going to impact business and vice versa. One thing I want to say this too. So this isn't maybe the best practice for an individual to go do, but you talk about doing a lot of detailed prep prior to coming in. I know that you do that. And so I actually don't. And I, and I want to be able to step back for a the little honesty, bit. Denny. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be able to step back a bit and, and actually not miss the obvious. And there's some obvious things that come up when we do our strategic oh. planning that it's just like, boys, we need to increase our prices by 10% next year. And we're sitting all this time problem solving all these numbers and sales metrics and marketing and lead gen mm-hmm. stuff. And I'm like, we just need to increase the price totally. by 10%. And I know that we can do that. I have confidence in it. Yeah. And, and and being able sometimes to get your, your face away from the data and just like step back and just look at what's actually going yeah. on around you, I think is important because you can get pretty, you can nerd out quite a bit on some of this stuff. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yep. And whether you're on your own doing this or you have a bit of a team, I would, I would make sure you give yourself time to just l- step back and don't miss the windshield wipers wiping in front of you. Stop looking so far into the distance. Yeah, yeah, you have, and I don't know if this necessarily applies to everyone, but in, in our dynamic of us three, it, it's definitely a big thing. Like Danny has a very unique and interesting ability just to like sit back, come in. I don't know if the word is like unprepared, but let's just call it more like clear without without 
being so in the weeds and have like really good big picture perspective on stuff. Totally. I think the other piece besides, you know, another important piece of this preparation is actually like where you prepare, like where do you do this? Like finding Mm -hmm. the right location to actually even do the strategic planning. Oh, like the actual event itself. The actual event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, That's a piece for like, sure. Like thinking through, yeah. like you want to, I mean, what we've always done is we've always gone to an offsite place. Mm-hmm. That uh, So we've booked that advance. We've kind of removed ourselves from our day-to-day like office or whatever Definitely. we might do. And so that's a really critical part to kind of prepare for this event. Yeah. To find a good place to do it. Yeah. So as, as you're th- just, th- there is your actual like prep work, which is, which is like the meat and potatoes of it. But yes, absolutely. In addition to that, you also do want to think through a venue. Um, so the, all of, I think every single annual strategic planning we've done has been in a unique, cool place where you're excited to go and it's, and it's, and it's fun mm. to be there. Um, but it's also uh, a very peaceful environment. So by like uh, unique and fun and interesting and where you're excited, like I'm not talking like the Las Vegas Strip. Um, it is, it's also somewhere that is like a very peaceful, calm, big picture thinking place. So almost all the time we've been somewhere where we're out of cell phone reception. It's typically in a mountain or in the forest somewhere. It's often a log cabin with very, a fire with a fire it almost yeah, yeah it pretty well always is a fire actually <laughs> sometimes yeah. it is a hot tub it's often in snow and it's just it's very beautiful it's very tranquil and it's totally different like i would not i couldn't personally imagine doing this like in a boardroom in our kind of day-to-day office i couldn't imagine doing it in like a busy it's not in miami <laughs> it's 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 secluded calm in the mountains somewhere where we really get to connect and I'll say that, that that's what we like to do for those who are listening. Totally. What I would say the two components that you incorporate when you plan these things that I always appreciate is one, you always incorporate things we love to do, right? So whatever you love to do, whatever's listening, make sure you incorporate that and you make sure we have time to be focused, right? So we're not just distracted the whole time having fun, right? Yeah. So it's, it's thinking through what do I actually love to do and how do I wrap around some focused space around that properly? Yeah, so 100%. maybe maybe you go to the Vegas Strip for four hours, <laughs> but then you come back and you focus. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, good. So anyway, to wrap up that point from a prep perspective, uh, the actual prep work, it involves some personal planning and, and reflection. It involves some big picture kind of strategic reflection on the initiatives of the closing year and big picture strategic thinking on the coming year. And then it involves thinking through kind of like a first cut of what are your tactical plans and your goals for the year coming up? Um, me personally, that prep, as Danny said, I kind of nerd out on it maybe a little bit more. Um, I typically though do it over like in a, um, I, I, for whatever reason, function well in places that are loud. So I was actually literally last week, I was at like a really nice, like old school kind of cocktail bar in the city having maybe a few too many nice cocktails. I was literally just like sitting at the bar on my computer thinking through some of this stuff, but it's, it's whatever it is works for you, but you should be in an environment where you think calmly, clearly. It's just in a very reflective kind of place. Just to kind of finalize this, this, this prep piece too, if, if, there's a, if, it's, if there's a few of you coming to this event, it might just be you, or maybe there's a few people on your team that you'd want to bring to something like this what I would recommend is you send like a document in advance with like very yeah. specific questions with, with what we've been talking about here. It's in your inbox. Yeah. <laughs> that, it's in my inbox. Yeah. So exactly. It's coming so up se- next week. Yes. Yeah, so Cause we're doing this next, we're doing this lightly next week, but we always send questions out ahead of time. So we always all think about these things coming in. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll say to Igor, like one of the things I appreciate is because you put all that thought and work into it, the questions you ask are the right questions. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's the, th- those are the things that get us thinking about the right things. You're pointing us, you're pointing our attention in the right area. And I would say that to, to everyone listening to, if you bring your team, one of the biggest things you can do to get the most out of your team is to think through what are the right questions I want I to be, ask. I want them to Not think, what yeah. are the right answers I need to tell these people. Yeah. What are the right questions I want to ask them? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, good. Awesome. So, uh, that's kind of what the prep looks like. Oh, and then, and then that important side note of don't forget to book a great venue for this to have a great conducive environment. Um, one, before we get into the actual structure of what we do in our three day event, which as James said is coming up next week. Um, I want to just touch on this. The three of us have, uh, there's a big gift here, which is we have the three of us 
together to do it, right? It's not just kind of me sitting solo. A lot of entrepreneurs uh, are the founder of a business, of a company themselves. Um, so this process you could be doing on your own. Uh, but if you did want to include other kind of perspectives and a bit of a group dynamic, how how could somebody do that if, if they're listening to this and saying, well, this sounds freaking awesome, you guys, but it's just me. Totally. Yeah. I go, do you have, I, yeah. So, I, so if you, if you, I've done it by myself before uh, at one point and that is a different dynamic, but it's definitely similar. But if, if it was, if I had a, if I was a sole entrepreneur or a, a single founder, I would maybe bring in some of the key people on my team. Maybe not my entire team, but if there's a few people like other leaders on the team or a bit of a management team, if I had that, I might involve a few of those people into the into the meeting, and and do an offsite visit or an offsite event with them. With them, them yeah, yeah, with them, yeah. It's been a lot of years since I've done one on my own. I, I'm just thinking back, like eight years ago, nine years ago, whatever it was. It was probably the last time I did. I do remember being excited about it though. Cause I was like, what are we going to do next year? And I was totally. kind of excited to get out the Excel sheet, kind of think through what it was going to take to get to where I wanted to be. The be like, Oh, how's that going to happen? Start to problem solve. Right. Um, yeah. So I've seen some of our members, you know, uh, actually one of the, the coaches, contractor coach pro Jim Johnson, I'll give him a shout out, but one thing he did a while ago just to build out his whole book. So this is different than building a strategic plan, but he just went away he four by four for like three weeks. And he just like completely went away from everything he's been doing for the longest time. And just like, thought through his future totally and uh he's like danny that was one of the most reflective most valuable things i've ever done because i'm always with people and um yeah i think there's some huge value to that totally so. yep so let's get into our event like the, let's get into the meat and potatoes of this our actual strategic planning event what do we do well there's a lot that we do <laughs> <laughs> there's um I'll, just, I'll, I'll give it like a general highlight i find that we spend probably 60 percent of our time in discussion mm -hmm. so just like thought you asking these questions, us, us bantering about these questions and, and really whether it's on our iPhone or on a scrap piece of paper, we're just writing down random notes and thoughts mm -hmm. to come back to later. So we're really, we're spending a lot of time just kind of just exploring ideas yeah. and not trying to commit to anything for a while. Yeah. From there, I think we spend probably about 30% of our time nerding out on an Excel sheet and mm -hmm. calculating numbers, seeing what kind of like financials work well, what the sales metrics should be, adjusting things a little bit, changing a bunch of little metrics to make the business plan makes sense. And then I find a very little amount of time, maybe call it like five, 10% at the very end, summarizing everything into one sheet. Yeah. Right. It, just to kind of piggyback this, there's, there's like a qualitative side to it, like a lot of like, like a discussion. And then there's the quantitative side as well. So it's like, there's a balance of both. Yeah. yeah. I say on a high level too, we have, we incorporate like kind of downtime Totally and fun, fun time, whether it be like, you know, the, the four by four in there, or we'll go for a hike or we'll do some kind of whatever skiing or whatever it is we're doing. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah, so that Danny, that 60% of the time is relatively unstructured where it's just in conversation. So I just want to bring this to life a little bit for, for everyone watching and listening, but basically it starts with a drive together to the location of wherever we're going with the three of us. We'll often stop somewhere and have dinner. We typically leave in the afternoon so that we have an evening and a night together before the first day begins. Um, what's uh, one of the things that, that I really enjoy about it is where we just, to your point, Danny, we're, we're not at a computer and we'll often go for a hike or a really long walk and we'll print off our each of our prep doc, like our, our prep docs that we, where we have the notes of what we reflected on. And we'll just walk for like six hours, seven hours and just, just talk basically. Um, and that, that kind of, uh, is kind of like a proven thing, but when you're like moving and walking and talking, you do think quite well. And, uh, and that, that's typically how, how it starts. So there's a lot of, whether it's like over dinner, over a really long walk, uh, over a drive, whatever it is, there's a lot of like thought that happens during that. It's not, this, this, this isn't like sitting in a, you know, around like a really big table with a laptop the whole time. Like, yes, there's some of it, Danny, as you said, where we're actually, we are breaking down like revenue, marketing plans, sales plans, revenue plans, all this kind of stuff. Yes, that is 30%, but 60% of this is like pretty casual. Like we're making dinner, we're in a hot tub, we're sitting down a, uh, around a fire pit outside with a crackling fire. We're, we're out for a hike. Like it's, it's chill. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. And this is like, this is, Typical. I don't know if we've said this yet, but it's like this is over like 
maybe two, but maybe even three days. Like this yeah. is, yeah, this is over, this over a, a good chunk of time. Yeah, I think when a lot of people think about strategic planning, they think about a boardroom, they think about a whiteboard, yeah. and an they think about yeah. charts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and actually very few of those things do we actually have around us, which is different. Yeah, and, and let's just use the example of what we're doing next week. So we're leaving, like we've got a work day on Wednesday and we're leaving in the later afternoon and we're going to a place, uh, it's kind of just like north of Vancouver, on the ocean called, called the Sunshine Coast. You literally, you take like an hour ferry to it and a beautiful drive up along the coast. And it's in, it's in a cabin with a, like windows overlooking the ocean uh, and a wood burning fireplace and a hot tub looking at the ocean. Like that, that's then secluded. And that's where we're going to be. We're going to be there for three nights. So we're going to get there on the Wednesday night, probably on Thursday, we're going to go on a hike. It's beautiful hikes. Like it's kind of like where the mountains meet the ocean. We're going to go on a big hike. Uh, we'll have our prep with us printed out, you know, in the pocket of the jacket and a phone for notes and we'll talk through stuff and then we'll come back. We'll make a dinner together. Then it's probably not till the following day till like the Friday that we'll even open a computer. So it's, yeah, that's the kind of vibe that's happening. And all that stuff that's happening on those walks it's we're, we're getting ideas and then we're starting to we're taking notes maybe on the phone yeah. like you said but then we're capturing it like maybe that second day exactly yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. yeah so yeah so danny yeah to exactly to what danny said it's not just like a boardroom and a computer and a whiteboard the whole time at least yeah. yeah so there's a lot of the key is like there's a lot of fun there's a lot of personal connection i think for us like our, our relationship is really the foundation of, of a lot of the companies kind of uh I, actually success to be honest um so th there's a lot of personal connection and fun and 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 absolutely there, there's a whole bunch of business strategy um and uh and 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 you know it's not all like walks and fun and, and fires and things like that but is at the end of the day you do need to come out with kind of what is the core part of an annual strategic planning session there's many ways that this can look uh, for us. Uh, um, one of the we're really big fans of what's called like the one page strategic plan, and we use a bit of a modified version of it. Um, and uh, for that, actually, James, why don't you give us a bit of a rundown? Because it's a big part of what we teach in the Breakthrough Academy program. Yeah. So, so basically, ultimately, the plan you're going to have like what are your big goals for the year? We're going to capture that. Yeah. We're going to capture any kind of critical numbers that are really important metrics that are KPIs that are really important. We're going to capture like what are the big initiatives or implementation items that we, that we really want to get done. And then the other piece is once we've kind of got those for the year, another really important part is in quarter one, what has to happen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's ultimately what we will come out of this yeah. entire and this system that we use it is a bit of a modified version from Vern Harnish, the one page strategic plan. So to give credit where it's due, he initially developed the system and it's quite a popular one. It's used by companies all around the world. Uh, we really like it because it forces you to think, to, to, to summarize rather simply because it can't be some super complex thing. Why? Because it needs to be translated to your team. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. And we'll talk about that in, in a little bit, kind of what we do when we come out of our three days. But you have to be able to summarize it into something that's relatively simple and something that your team will understand. So um, that's the system that we we like to use. And, and what we've done for listeners uh, is, is we've actually included with this episode an example and a template of this plan and the way that we do it. And it even comes with a bit of an instructional video in the form of what we call these contractor quick tools. So uh, what you want to do is head to the link that's in the show description and you can download it and get a sense for how we do this in both. You have a template file for your annual strategic planning this year. And it also includes a really great example of what this looks like when it's properly filled out uh, for the case of a contracting company. So that's what we like to come up with. Um, but it, in, in essence, like this, this time needs to hit on a couple really important kind of factors, right? So you need to really think through what are your big initiatives and what you are, and to Danny's point, aren't going to tackle in a year. So there's, there's so much conversation to be had to, to distill at the end of the day, like, you know, by the end of it, what you are going to do, but that's kind of a really, really core part of it. Um, there is an element of you need to come up with your actual like business plan for the year. Like how much revenue are you going to do? And it needs to be black and white, like this much in revenue, right? $7,465,000, right? And it's got to be based on logic in the form of a marketing plan, of a sales plan, and then how you're also going to produce that revenue. And then there's your budget, 
right? So you got to make sure that this is, is viable. And we actually do our, our, our budget, not just for the year, but we have a monthly breakdown. So there's 12 months to that budget where we make sure that the business is financially viable right from the beginning. Um, so that, that's, that, that's kind of like in a nutshell, I think what you need to have by the time that you're done the three days, is that, is that, yeah, am I missing it, anything big? You go ahead. We, yeah. We, we've obviously talked a lot about the, the visionary discovery piece. The work involved is, you know, we have QuickBooks. We have a very clear understanding of our numbers coming in. You know, we have a very good sales tracker and a marketing tracker in our CRM system. So we know exactly how many leads we're getting by source. We know when they're coming in, what mm. month, how many deals we're closing per month. We can see our closing ratios, our lead to sale ratios. And so I come in prepared with those numbers for you. Mm -hmm. You come in prepared with the financial metrics. You come mm -hmm. in prepared with the member metrics. And we bring those together and we really look at the data. Mm -hmm. And the data tells its own story, mm -hmm. right? And regardless of how we yeah. feel and how our vision is and where we want to go with the company, that data will sometimes disrupt us a little bit and be like, well, it is what it is, boys, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so what are we going to do about it, right? And, and we've made some pretty interesting strides between like member retention, um, the closing ratio in our company, um, because we put some very intentional thought to those things. And we realized that long term, these are sustainable or uh, numbers that need to be sustainable at a certain metric. Totally. And if you don't know that stuff, then you don't know where to direct your attention. Uh, so, and, and to kind of kind of continue this thought, once as we kind of like review these numbers and build these plans, I think the natural thing that I find that we start to do next is like, who are the people that we need? Uh, to, yes. Who are the yeah. people we need to make this happen? So we obviously we already have a team, but with the goals and what we want to accomplish, there might be some holes. Like, do we need to hire? what roles do we need to hire more of or, or whatnot. Yeah. So that's a good that, point. That, that really comes out of this discussion as well. Yeah, it's pro it's proactive hiring versus reactive, right? I think a yeah. lot of people react to like, we need a project manager tomorrow, <laughs> right? Because yeah. we, we booked a giant job versus I can see in three months from now, we're probably going to need somebody in this area of the company. Because I've built the business plan. Totally. And you can see what's coming. And what's interesting about it is, is we all get to start recruiting three months, six months earlier than you organically would. Yeah. Which gives yeah. us that much better of a chance of finding somebody. Yeah. And even then, it's, we still go over on our time yeah, limits. It's, but it's still challenging, but still uh, challenging. We, we have a fighting chance. <laughs> At least we have yeah. a fighting chance. So, okay, so just, just to put this into context, to Danny's earlier point, this doesn't all ex like happen in a boardroom with a whiteboard and a big long wooden table and a laptop. That's not like the, there's way more to this event, as we said, um, in terms of connection, think time, fun, all this stuff. But on the flip side of it, this isn't just like we go for really long walks and talk about stuff and then get back in the car and, 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 Kumbaya, and, and go back fire. to the city. <laughs> totally. So it is a balance in between yeah. coming back to what Danny said. It's 60 percent kind of unstructured, uh, free flowing conversation, deep conversation, but just fairly unstructured. But there's absolutely 30 percent that's on a computer, like the tactic tactical building the one page strategic plan that is, is is in that example in the link in the description so you should grab that if you haven't already but we're filling out that one page strategic plan we're building out a, like a marketing plan a sales plan a revenue plan we're building out the whole budget and we're looking from a people planning and payroll perspective all of that is being mapped out for the entire following year the last thing i'll, I'll say is that, that one page strategic plan that we build out, we, we have it for the year, like the annual, like again, the, yeah. the, the goals, the, what we want to implement, any, any KPIs that we have, critical numbers. We also kind of think through the next, another really important time frame is the next quarter. So we kind of get a little bit granular in the next quarter. And then the last piece I would say is we, we put who is driving this critical number or this mm -hmm. implementation item on an annual perspective, but also for Q1. Is this an Igor thing? Is it a Danny thing? So there's like accountability. Thing? There's accountability. Yeah. So we like, we'll put it like JD or IT or DK yeah. next to those ones. So we yeah. know who, who's driving that. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a really, it's a really good point. Um, if you are one where you find like you're good at having your mind kind of freewheel a lot and you can, you're good at thinking through stuff and just, just letting that unstructured conversation roll. Uh, one of the things you might want to do going into your strategic planning session is actually to put like a checklist of your outcomes. Like what do we need to come out with and, and just keep tabs on that? Like over the course of three days, okay, I have to come out with a really solid sales plan where I, I know how much I need to sell. And, you know, in the contracting example, 
how many jobs that's going to be based on historical averages, uh, how many estimates that's going to equate to, how many qualified leads I need to do that. So you, you need to come up with that sales plan. You've got to come up with your budget and it, it's good to put like a bit of a checklist together if, if you know, if you kind of have a tendency to be a bit freewheeled with it. Um, so anyway, that, that's kind of a structure of the three days. Once we have all that stuff, like it's, it's sitting uh, in, you know, and it's in a computer folder, to frankly, that that's all that exists, but you've done this deep thought, uh, that's gone in over three days. You pack up your stuff. You leave, we leave that house. Um, what happens from there, uh, guys, what are some of these important things in your mind that you need to do once you've come out of this event so that it's, it kind of turns into reality? Cause at that point, all you have is, you know, some Excel files. Um, actually I, one, one thing I'll say, this is for us, you know, this is usually kind of like sometime in early to mid December mm-hmm. when we're doing this process. But what I find typically happens after this, these few days is that, you know, it could be, there's probably some a, a, like in the short term, like maybe the next week, for example, the next, what the f- first couple of days you get back or the next week, there's probably some key conversations that you have to have with people to like maybe initiate things mm-hmm. or like there might be something that kind of came up in that meeting. They're like, okay, I got to have this conversation with this person. So you, it's probably some action that way. And then we use a sauna for like project management. So it could also be like, Hey, there's a, there's an initiative or a project you might start to like put a critical path down and start to like mm-hmm. get that scheduled out or thought through totally. that way as well. Yeah. Like you got to disseminate it to people for it to take action. Cause at yeah. the end of the day, it doesn't all just sit with you. Right. Uh, a best practice here I think is, um, when you pick your dates for annual strategic planning, and, and again, we recommend December because we've just found that most people, i.e. your team, people just naturally think on an, on an annual cycle, like a year begins on January 1st, it ends on December 31st. People have been ingrained in that for, for a very long period of time. So ideally you're doing this in, in, in December, but um, you, you basically have time, wh- whatever date it is, the following week you've pre-blocked open time in your, in your calendar where you pop those files back open, you reflect on them again, and then you can open a sauna or whatever project management software you use. You can kind of map out, okay, like how am I going to get this into action through my people? Because if you need to do a CRM switch, you're probably involving people on the sales team, right? Or you might be finding an external contractor that's going to be helping with some uh, implementation or development or whatever, right? So you've got um, you, you've got to to create some time for yourself when you get back uh, to be able to assign stuff to people. So that's 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 pretty important. Without that, it could just literally sit on your computer. And with that said. I think we're going to talk about this in a second, but you need to actually think through how you're going to announce this to the team. Totally. Right? Because you've just done a whole bunch of work and thought of which some things the team might love, some things, some things the team might really question you around, right? And some mm-hmm. things you might even have missed a little bit. And I found that we, I know for us, like we take some time, we put together a little PowerPoint to really think through like how we want to present this to the team, both to create buy-in, but also clarity so they can really rally around totally. this with us. And sometimes we even get a bit of pushback and a bit of challenge, mm-hmm. which I think is good. Yeah. And, you know, it's so, it's early enough on now, too, that we can take some of that feedback and really look at it. Did we miss something? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Speaking of pushback and challenges, something really cool that that Breakthrough Academy members go through. Uh, actually, maybe, James, you can maybe speak about it. So we have, a, we have a, a huge event that happens every January. So it's right after this annual strategic planning time in December. And it's, and it's typically early, mid-January. We have a big winter summit where hundreds of Breakthrough Academy members get together. Um but that's also a really cool kind of way where you get feedback and perspective from other high performing peers on these annual strategic plans. Yeah. So basically what we do is we have everyone coming into this uh, winter summit, which you said was kind of early to mid January and everyone comes into it with a first draft of their strategic plan. So they kind of do the work themselves and think through everything we've been talking about here and then they get, before they actually come to the event, they get put in groups of typically four businesses, yeah. you know, in similar industries or they can, they can relate to. And they all give each other feedback. So they'll look at the other person's plans. They'll give them feedback, things they like about it, maybe holes they're not, they're seeing or blind spots or, hey, what about this? Or I have a question about this. And you'll, you know, everyone does that for each other. So you kind of see this this prep is done, this other extra set of eyes is done, and then you actually get together live and you 
present the plans and, and go through more feedback right. and then allows you to finalize your plan and then and then from there you'll roll it out with the, with your teams yeah yeah so however it's done like being able to get some external perspective is always such a powerful thing because at the end of the day you're only one person or we're three people to be able to get external perspective is 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 huge so mm-hmm. danny i do want to come back to what you're saying around like our way of doing things uh at the end of the day like this plan is only as good as it is understood by your team because mm-hmm. it everyone is needed to be able to be able to action this stuff effectively so one of the things that we do is that we always run a big team event in january where the entire team is together and it's in that event that and, and actually we put i put a lot of time into this stuff where we really nicely in the form of a robust PowerPoint, we we summarize the closing year to highlight to the team of what we did well, what we didn't do well as an organization, and then in a ton of detail, roll out the annual strategic plan for the coming year so that everybody's on the same page. Like, what are the big picture goals? What are the smaller KPIs that we need to hit? Uh, what are the big initiatives we're going to take on in the year? Who's driving which ones? And there's typically hours of discussion around that and then, and then we also focus in on that first quarter and talk about, to your point, James, what are we going to do in these first uh, three months specifically? And I think just some of the nuance of that is like you mentioned, we do it on a PowerPoint. We kind of go through the different areas of the business, marketing, sales, what went well, didn't, didn't go well and, and all that. And we also kind of, you know, it's just a small thing, but we give everyone a copy of that. Just mm-hmm. Like a printed out copy so they can kind of see it and we kind of walk them through it together as well. Yeah. Yep. One thing I think is really powerful, Igor, you, you did this about, I think it was about three and a half, year, three and a half years ago. Um, we built our big five-year BHAG. Our painted right? picture. Our, our, yeah, our painted, painted picture. picture yeah. Well, it, it started as our BHAG. It was our five-year big, hairy, audacious goal. Mm-hmm. And then out of that, you crafted a, whatever it was, seven-page painted picture, which was essentially a speech that you mm-hmm. wanted to be able to give to the team in five years from now. Exactly. That clearly defined all function of what, functions of what we do as a company and let them see the true vision of what's being created. Yes. And I watched literally within an hour, our team go from, oh, we're all here, we enjoy BTA, it's, we have a lot of fun together, we're all, we're all helping and making an impact in the, in the industry, to, oh, we're on a mission. Yeah. Like together. And like, I actually can see where I fit in this. Mm-hmm. And I actually want to yeah. go talk to you afterwards because I have some thoughts that I think you just mentioned. I would love to be a part of this actually. Yeah. And, it, and it brought our team together in a way I've never seen before. And right. I think it's so important. That we, just, we just talked a lot today around how we do an annual plan, but that annual plan is leading somewhere. Yeah. It's leading to that five-year BHAG. Yeah. And everybody gets it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's This is a fairly well-known idea, to be clear. I didn't come up with this by any means. Uh, there's a lot of organizations that do this, but it, it it is an interesting exercise to go and do. I think it's kind of neat because what you're doing is, is you're basically saying, like, what kind of speech do I want to be able to give to our team, like a speech of reflection of where we are and how did we get here five years from now? Yeah. So it's kind of interesting, right? So they call it, uh, I think we did it in 2019, so it was like a 2024 painted picture it was it was going it was in january 2019 and we said okay well where do we want to be headed um and uh and it was a really interesting exercise i remember spending the better part of a day writing that thing out and it's cool because one it's 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 fun and very interesting for you to think through that perspective of like what kind of speech do i want to be giving five years from now but you're right it also brings a lot of people it's a very high leverage exercise because you print it out and it's you know print it out in with beautiful graphics and and nicely bound and it's a nice paper and all this stuff, but you would care about that more than everyone else. <laughs> but it gives people something nice to like sit down and like 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 we go through it together, yep. and it's just it makes it more real for people. I guess is what I'm ultimately getting at. It's like this is where we want to go. I, I want to sp- speak to one piece of this too that I think is very powerful. Is it, it, if you do a, a painted picture or a vision like that. What it does as well is if it says that this is where we're going and this is the vision we're going to, all the things that you might do in an annual plan, like, hey, we want to implement this Mm -hmm. CRM or we want to implement this training program or do this, build this process or whatever it may be, it puts context. As people can be like, okay, now I see why we would do this. And Mm -hmm. it it, it just allows, it kind of puts puts everything together. And then it also forced people to, to what you said a moment ago was like, Oh, that's cool. I want to be part of that. I, that, that, yeah, that I can see where I fit. I, in yeah, this. you can see where we're doing. So it's, you know, we, when we, when we built that thing, it kind of, it's, it's, it's a kind of a unifying thing we can, we can all get behind. 
Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. And I don't want to kind of get too um, kind of hokey with this, but I will also say that I've seen time and time again that th- there is something to that where if you put what you want to create for yourself and for the organization out into the world, for lack of a better term, uh, there is something powerful to that. And I'm not suggesting that, 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 that creating greatness is all about, you know, thinking it and writing it and meditating on it. And then all these things will just miraculously appear in front of you. There's, there's a huge amount of tactical thought and, and, and hard work and making moves and making plays that's involved. But I've just, I've observed this over and over again with a lot of people. It's the people that put a lot of thought into what they want to create in their life and, and, and physically, they write it out, they talk about it, they communicate it clearly, it does happen. Mm-hmm. And that's a very powerful thing. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's, it's th- th- that, that's kind of, kind of a plus one, as we might say, around like thinking through like a five-year, big, hairy, audacious goal, where you headed, plus two to kind of, you know, put it into a painted picture and communicate it clearly, but at, at a baseline, foundationally, what you need to do is you need to have your the core people in your team together and you need to communicate of girls, guys, here's the strategic plan for the year. Here's Here are the big picture initiatives that we need to focus on, the things that we need to implement, the systems that we need, the people that we need to hire, kind of the fundamental thing at the core, what needs to happen this year. And then here are the goals that we need to achieve, like the numerical goals that need to happen. And, and, and here's the next, the, here's the next three and months. And then there's a quarter. And the next Absolutely. quarter. Yeah. yeah. And exactly. that's usually done at the same time, the year and then the next quarter yeah. all at the same time. In our cycle, we do, um, in addition to the annual strategic planning on that note, we also have a quarterly rhythm where then at the end of a quarter, we'll meet again. For, it's not, three days with as much prep it's typically one day but it is together where we'll recap on that q1 and chart the course for q2 in context of that annual plan i want to say something that actually because in january 2020 we built our plan Mm -hmm. and in march of 2020 the world changed Exactly. Yeah. And what was very example. interesting about that is we had none of that in our plan because it was not even on our radar at the time. And what was cool to watch is we didn't change the goal. You know what we changed? The way we got to the, the plan. Goal. The plan, plan was changed. To get to that goal. Yeah, yeah. Totally. And we executed on it in such a way that I'm very proud, right? Like we, I think we hit within $1,000 of our year end revenue that we yeah. set in January of 2020. And yeah. that came out of a very big maneuver that we had to make, but the goal stayed the same. Yeah. And to yeah, anybody totally listening, right. when you're doing quarterly reviews, I would say the major purpose of it isn't to go and scrap the goal from the beginning of the year and put in a new goal. Yeah. No, the goal stays, but your problem solving, your planning on how you hit that goal will adjust with the yeah. marketplace or the external factors that come. Yeah. I'm very proud of that, actually. And I totally forgot for a while about that until you just mentioned it. But that, that is very interesting, right? Like in um, in December 2019, we were together for three days and we, we put together a really robust plan for the year of 2020. And, uh, and I remember early in that year, I was away for a long time. I was in Australia and then I was in Indonesia and, and things got went crazy. Right. And then, (laughs) and, and, and when I got back and COVID was out of, uh, the whole COVID situation was out of control. And, um, long story short, like we, we made some pivots after that, that Q1, but that original plan that we set in December, 2019, what it was, Danny, actually, so we hit year end revenue within 0.1% right. above, mm-hmm. 0.1% above original plan and goal. Yeah. And by the way, this is on a plan of many, many, many millions of dollars in, in revenue. And, and it's like the analogy would be you're on a multi-day expedition where you're hiking we're still going to the exact same place. How we got there was in a completely different route. Totally different, totally, yeah. And that's the power of being, of having that skill uh, that you, that, that only comes of year after year of doing this, which is like you're able to navigate and become a way better tactician in navigating. I, I will say this too. We've been doing this for a long time now. I think this is a learned skill. Yeah, you can, t- like we are way better now at doing this than we would have been five, 10 Because years of the ago. reps. Because of the reps. But, you know, to your analogy, I love that analogy too. The other one, the analogy I see is like, you see it all the time in sports too, but like you come in with a game plan, you know, it's like the Mike Tyson, you get punched in the mouth and then you have to make it, you know, everyone, you, you, you have to make a new plan or everyone has a yes. plan to get punched in the mouth. <laughs> everyone has a plan to get punched in the mouth, right? And yeah. the same thing with, you know, with football too, like you have to make audibles and changes, but you have a game plan yeah. that you have to adjust. 
So it's not being perfect, but it's that the rigor and intention is huge. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and that's, I think, one of my, my biggest um, kind of pieces of, of, of thought for, for listeners right now is like, if this sounds all complex and you've not done this before, that's totally okay. If you start somewhere, you will improve on this over time. It, it's such a learned skill and it's a learned skill that doesn't happen after listening to this one episode of Contract Revolution, after reading one book from Vern Harnish or any of the, the other amazing thought leaders. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's learned over a long period of time with a lot of practice and execution. We've logged so many annual strategic planning sessions four times as many quarterly strategic planning sessions is we, we've done this stuff so many times that, that you're a, you just, you learn to be a better tactician over time, but the best place to start if you haven't already is right now. Totally. And, and I would encourage everybody to do that. So guys, this has been uh, a really fun conversation on a subject that we, that we've, you know, we've been through a lot together, which is kind of cool. Um, I want to uh, I want to just say one more time, if you haven't already, you want to grab that download, grab that one page strategic plan that we use, uh, go to the show notes and you'll be able to download both the uh, template file that we use as well as a really good filled out example for you to be able to check out concretely what we're talking about in this episode. And I want to end with one really important thought that I have which is, you know, this, it sounds like a lot of work. And at, at some level it is, if you're doing the prep well, and you're in, you know, you're, you're focused on this for three days, but guys, this should be fun. I know it is for me. Um, there's so many things that are, that, that are really difficult that we do in business, but at the end of the day, um, you know, if visioning, dreaming, planning isn't fun, I don't know what is. Totally. I'll say this too. It allows me to be focused and put my head down for the rest of the year yeah. because I love to vision and dream too much. And it forces me to say, you know what? There's a time and a space for this and I'll do it there and I'll stop doing it every other Tuesday and distracting everybody. Right. Yeah, Cause you know, I, it is, it's, it's, it's now narrowed down Yeah, and it's, and it's, yeah. It's, yeah it's I, more I would say this is a highlight of the year. I would say doing these with you yeah. guys, yeah. right? Like it's a fun thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome guys. Well on that bombshell, uh, let's cheers. Uh, yeah. And have a great, we're going to have a great strategic plan next session yeah, this right. year Let's as well. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot for listening to this episode of Contractor Evolution. Uh, if you've already subscribed to our channel, consider sharing this episode with another contractor who you think needs to hear it.